<laughs> thanks for waiting. I know it's been a, a late night. I appreciate you guys waiting. Um, obviously, a lot of excitement through our building tonight. Um, we feel really fortunate to be able to get Justin, you know, in, in the area of the draft, we were able to select him. Uh, the excitement throughout our whole building, you can feel it as I walk down here tonight, um, what he's going to do for the future of our organization. There's so much, guys, that goes into this process, as you well know, but starting with Matt and our scouts and our coaches as we build into this moment and, and into tonight. But I think, uh, you know, when we select the quarterback, uh, the situation that that quarterback is coming into is critical. And uh, I think we provide a great situation, as I kind of alluded to a couple of days ago, for that quarterback's development to happen. Uh, Matt has spoken to Andy Dalton tonight. Um, that communication and clarity for us is really important. Um, Andy is our starter, uh, and we're going to have a really good plan in place to develop Justin and, and do what's best for our organization to win games. Uh, so with that, I'm sure you guys got a lot of questions, and I'll be happy to answer them. Jeff Dickerson. Hey, Ryan, can you, can you take us through kind of what you and the other people in the draft room were thinking as you saw that, hey, you know, there's still two quarterbacks left as you're getting to – the 10th and 11th pick, and, and how do you know when is the right time to, to go and make that move? Yeah, you know, I think it's there, there's a lot of patience, Jeff, that comes with that. To be honest, that can be difficult. And, you know, over the last couple of days, you know, once the board set, the, the remaining days have really been going through all these different scenarios that could happen. And as you can imagine, there's so many different variables and so many different situations, and we talk out every single one of them, right? And so we had, you know, you know, multiple plans tonight and the way the board was falling, you know, we got excited when, 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 when the quarterbacks kind of came off that way and Justin continued to fall. And so for us, it was just executing our plan, uh, you know, at the right spot in the draft and being patient with that, which sometimes can be difficult. Um, fortunately with the giants, uh, I've known Dave Gettleman for 20 years. Um, he's an amazing person, an amazing general manager. And we go way back. So that communication, you know, started, really this morning um, about the possibility of something like that happening uh, and when we were able to execute it in the draft. Um, and I just feel real fortunate. Adam Johns. Hey, Ryan, when you were looking at Justin the, this past season, I know it was condensed because of the pandemic, but I'm curious, his last three college games, struggles against Northwestern, comes back against Clemson, he had the Alabama game. What resonated with you specifically and then maybe Matt from those final three games of Justin's college career? Yeah, I feel like, you know, we've talked about him for, for a long time now. You know, Matt has a good relationship with Ryan Day as well. But it's just, Adam, it's just the, the combination of factors that he has. You know, it's the, it's the arm talent. Um, it's, it's, it's the accuracy. It's the athleticism. When you see a guy with that kind of arm talent, um, with, with that kind of quarterback makeup that he has, with that kind of work ethic that's played in really big games and really big moments and performed in big moments, um, that's extremely tough. You know, I was at the Michigan game a couple of years ago when he came back in um, from a knee and we, and we know about the ribs and the hip. And I mean, this guy's toughness on a scale one to 10 is an 11. And you just love that about him. Oh, and then by the way, he runs a four, four, four. So you throw that all in together um, and it, it just it just feels good. Dan Wiederer. Ryan, a, a little two-pronged question here. First on uh, follow-up to JD's question earlier, when you were in that seven to 10 range there, can you take me through your own personal emotions of, of, of waiting out some quarterbacks that might've pulled the trigger on a quarterback and then seeing that you were gonna get that done? And then just follow up uh, on Justin, in your pre-draft interactions with him, what left the biggest impressions on you in the Zooms and the other times that you were able to, to connect with them? Yeah, you know, I think we knew there was going to be a sweet spot, Dan, for, for us to be in that, that quarterback world. And right in this area was kind of it. So it just required a little bit of patience to get to that point, you know, and, and kind of what's fair for us and what's fair for the other club. You got to be realistic to do these trades. You're not, you know, and I thought this one was, was very fair. Um, so it kind of played out that way. And, you know, again, we started making a lot of those phone calls this morning uh, with those teams in that area and just trying to find out what was what was a reality. And and this one was, you know, mm -hmm. so it worked out. But we were making phone calls all along there in that whole area, all in that range. Um, and I guess what stood out with him in all of our interviews, and, and we've done a lot of them. We were also at his second pro day 
uh, is just like his focus and like how, how serious he is and like that determination that he has. It's, I don't, I, I think you guys will feel it when you talk to him, if, if you already have just, he's really locked in um, his desire to be great. Um, you can feel that when you speak to him. Brad Biggs. Hey Ryan, um, there was a report not too long ago that Justin has uh, epilepsy. Where are you guys at with that situation and, and maybe the medication required to uh, keep that under control? Yeah, that's, you know, that's something you can talk to him about too. But, you know, I know he's, he's, he's handled a lot of those things, um, you know, throughout his life. And, you know, we have a lot of ties into the Iowa State football program and, and our doctors and trainers do a great job. And, I, and a shout out to those guys, Andre Tucker and Dr. Bowen and Dr. Katz and all the work that goes into that preparation, Brad, you know how important it is. It's the, it's the skill evaluation, it's the character and it's the medical. And I thought uh, it was, the medical was more difficult this year, but I thought our guys did an unbelievable job and uh, we were very comfortable with that um, and how he handles that. You know, we've dealt with uh, something similar in the past with, with different players over the years um, and, uh, and, and we're, and we're completely fine with it. Pat Finley. Hey, Ryan, how are you? Hey, Pat. Would you, did you think going into today that you would have this opportunity? Oh man, to be honest, I kind of had like three, three plans. And, and one was the first plan was, Hey, is there going to be an opportunity to go up and get a quarterback? You know, and let's see if we can make that happen. Right. That's, that's the first plan. If that doesn't happen, we had another one for some movement, maybe for some other positions uh, that would be value, valuable positions for us that, that would also hit some needs and match our board. And then the third one was to stay put. And luckily, Pat, plan one executed. What were the other positions? <laughs> I'll tell you after the draft. Adam Hoag. Hey, Ryan, how much did – Matt Nagy's experience in 2017 and the way that Pat came along that season behind Alex Smith playing to not only what happened tonight, but maybe going back to, to March and just the whole plan here with Andy and what and Nick and what you guys have in that quarterback room right now. Yeah. Cause I think Adam, like getting him is one thing, but uh, for us to surround him and develop him is the other thing. I mean, we talk about, you can draft the players, but you have to develop them the right way. And that's what I love about the environment that we have. And, and Matt, as you said, he has the blueprint. Like they did an awesome job with Patrick coming into Kansas City with Alex there. And Matt and I have talked about that a lot that year and how it was handled. And he kind of has a blueprint on how that was, you know, how, how that whole situation went down. And what I love about our environment is, is the veteran quarterbacks that we have in that room. Like I don't know if you look around the league how many – teams have that kind of experience in the room and then the coaches that we have surrounding that position and I can't say that enough like from Matt to laser to flip I mean flip he is one of the best coaches in the league at developing quarterbacks I really believe that and he is so excited tonight and laser's excited and Matt's excited um, about the opportunity to do that but at the right speed uh, it, because that, that that's what matters is developing this guy the process and how we do that is important. We got a good plan in place uh, to surround him with the right resources to develop him the right way. Kevin Fishpane. Hey Ryan, uh, when Matt went to that, uh, was at that second pro day that Justin had, and what was some of the feedback that that Matt gave you, just being able to watch him in person that afternoon? Yeah, I, you know, we went to um, pretty much all these top pro days, um, which, which was challenging this year because you know we could only bring three. Uh, that was the limit, so it was. It was always Matt, myself, and, and Josh Lucas. Um, we also sent Laser and Champ Kelly to his first pro day. So we, had, we, we were able to go to both of them uh, and get a lot of eyes on them. And uh, I think just seeing the ball come off his hand, the velocity, the way the ball comes off his hand, how natural that is. I think seeing him up close in person too, you see like just how he's built, like, he, the, like the muscular stature, how dense he is. Uh, I think that explains the durability that he has and the toughness that he has. Um, and then just being out there, hanging at the pro day, uh, you know, spending some time with their coaches as he's working out, you know, Matt, Matt had a lot of good conversations with Ryan day. Like I, like I said, he knows him well, 
But seeing the ball come off his hand live uh, was important for us. Um, I had seen him play live a couple of times, but I think being there, Matt and I, side by side, um, that was really valuable. A couple more for Ryan. Mark Potash. Hey, Ryan. Um, you obviously seem to have a pretty, be pretty resolute about the development factor with Fields, but will you and Matt give yourselves any chance to see exactly what you've got here and that maybe this guy's skill is so much different from Andy Dalton's that he might be your best quarterback this year? Yeah, you know, I think we just got to let it play out. You know what I mean? And let, let it play out. I think one of the best feelings in the world would be, you know, hey, we're rolling, we're playing really good football, we're winning, and we're looking over there and we're seeing this guy and we all know, everyone in the building knows that, hey, we got, we got a guy, you know? And, but I think, Mark, there's a lot, as you know, man, like as, as these guys coming into this, even all the experiences they have at the college level, you know, growing in, you know, watching tape, reading defenses, you know, working in the huddle, you know, you know, Matt jokes, you know, Patrick's first time in the huddle. These guys haven't really even been in the huddle the way the college offenses are. And so Matt, you know, will always tell me a story, Patrick's first time in the huddle, you know, his first practice, he's screaming as loud as he can. He's like, dude, you don't got to scream. You're in a huddle, you know, and it's just, it's just so new for these guys. Um, but I just, it'll be a daily process, a daily evaluation, as you said, Mark, um, but we're excited to let that play out. Thank you. Jason Leisure. Ryan, when you threw out his 40 time there, uh, it made me wonder how much you guys envision letting him play the way that he played in college versus projecting what you think you could turn him into. And, and if it's the former, are we going to see something from the Bears offense that we really haven't seen? He, he, yeah, he provides something, he, that element with your legs. When we talk to these defensive coordinators, Jason, like when we interview defensive coordinators, uh, you know, this after the season, they all fear these athletic quarterbacks. It adds a whole di another dynamic they have to defend. And a lot, of, a lot of guys have, a lot of guys don't. And he has that. So I think, Jason, there's a balance with making sure that you're maximizing that and using that, but you're not putting them at risk either, you know? And I, and I think he has that. And I think, again, the other thing that he has, Jason, which I thought was really good to see live, is he has, I think he has the body type to handle the rigors of our game you know, and, and be able to do those things where some guys, you might worry about that a little bit more with their body structure, but he's, he's got a muscular body type. He's extremely athletic. He knows when to get smart and avoid those type of hits. But again, that speed is real. And I think uh, we'd be doing a disservice if we didn't utilize all areas of his game, all strengths of his game. And one of those is his mobility. Chris Emma. Ryan, you, you saw with some of the struggles that Mitch had during his time coming in as a top quarterback pick. What about Justin's makeup makes you believe that he can handle the emotional and uh, mental challenges of being a Bears quarterback? It's a big one, man. Coming into the quarter and into uh, any NFL team, that's it's a big step. But what I love about this, Chris, is the environment that he's coming into. I, I really do. I love it. I love going through this whole process with Matt. I, I love the coaching staff that we've assembled, and I love the quarterbacks in that room. And so I just think he's coming in to an awesome environment to develop at the, at the right uh, time. We have time for one more. Dan? Ryan, Matt talks all the time about the touchdown to check down mentality. And obviously, it's something that Justin has shown on the college level. I'm wondering what left an impression on you about that and, and what you make of some of the uh, questions about his ability to, to go through reads in a, in a uh, efficient and speedy manner. Yeah. You know, I think, and there's a lot of, there's a lot of research and we have a lot of ways to study those things. And uh, we've invested in a lot of areas in our building that, that help us analyze those type of things that you're talking about, Dan, that's pretty cool. But you know, one of the, one of the best things he does is I like his, I like his aggressive approach, like the vertical passing game and how aggressive he is in that area. And you saw it, throughout Ohio State. And I think, you know, he has all those tools. He has all those arm strengths. Now it's on us as a staff to refine those and develop those. And I know he's going to be open to that. And that's what's exciting about it. Thanks, Ryan, and congrats. Thanks, guys. See you tomorrow.